Welcome to Man360, I'm your host, Brian. Today's program theme may seem a little out of the ordinary for a men's program, but we think it's important to talk about adoption and foster care. Today on the program, we talk with Dr. Alan Bixler, Executive Director of the Assemblies of God Family Services Program, Compact, and the National Director of the Assemblies of God Foster Care Network. We had an amazing and informative conversation that every man needs to hear. Then I sat down with a family friend and his son, Edwin and Carter Benayan, to share about their experience with adoption and foster care from a practical family perspective. In between the segments, we take a quick trip to Edgewood Orchard outside of Quincy, Illinois to see their orchard and to sample some of their world famous apple cider that's made from a blend of multiple apples grown on their farm. Then we'll end the program with a book review from one of my favorite Christian authors, Watchman Nee. I'm glad you're here. Let's get started. Welcome to Man 360. Dr. Alan Bixler and his wife Heather are longtime friends and doing a wonderful work to help place kids into godly homes through adoption and foster care. I caught up with Alan at the Assemblies of God General Council to talk about the specifics of his ministry, Compact. He shared some eye-opening statistics about the foster care system, proving the importance of their great work. Alan also shared an alternate angle to what foster care is when it comes to people loving on kids and getting them in church. Here's my conversation with Dr. Alan Bixler. Alan, thanks for being on Man360. Hey, honored to be here. Known you for just a few years. Quite a few. We were 30, counting dog years. Yeah, I know. It's, a, it's an old dog. We're trying to make it more ridiculous than we already know right, it is. Right, right. So I want to talk about something today on the program that uh, maybe doesn't seem like it'd be something you talk about on a men's program, but addressing adoption and foster mm. care yeah. and the importance and the power of providing a male influence in kids' lives. Can you yeah. share a little bit about that? Who you are and what you do and then yeah. I'll talk about it. Yeah. So, uh, I'm the Executive Director of Compact Family Services. That's the Assemblies of God Family Service Agency. I'm also the National Director for the Assemblies of God Foster Care Network. A uh, lot of different ministries and organizations that are, that are working together to really work towards redeeming some of the most vulnerable children in our nation. There's yeah. about 400,000 kids in the foster care system across this nation. But we've got more than enough churches to step up yeah. and more than enough men, as we're talking about today, to, to step in some of the gaps. Yeah. yeah. So I know we talked, uh, have talked off camera a little bit, just about what are some of the the kind of the hurdles maybe in men's lives when they hear something like adoption yeah. or foster care. Yeah. It's not like something where men would run maybe run to that, or it'd be maybe their wife would bring it up, right? And they'd be like, "Hey, I'm watching the game. I'm good." But yeah. share just a little bit about what are some of those maybe per like the perceived part of what that is, sure, and maybe the truth about what that looks like. Yeah. You know, we live in a culture that's constantly kind of man bashing on, on, on some fronts and the father statistics are showing we're, we're becoming more and more fatherless. It's not, it's yeah. not a, a random fact, it's just a fact. And, and, and the truth is, is we have men in churches, we have fathers in churches, and we have men who really have an opportunity to step up and be that pillar that we're designed to be, to be uh, responsible, to be able to uh, bring a covering. Uh, yeah. You know, all the stats follow everything that I'm talking about. You know, even to the point that uh, a, a child needs a father. Uh, if they're a foster child, there's a there's a break in the family. There's a relationship that's been broken. It's yeah. gotta be mended in relationship. Right. A father needs to be a part of that. So what an opportunity for Christian fathers to be able to step up with their family and to yeah. show an example to maybe a child that doesn't have a good example of a father and to be able to share not just a heavenly father opportunity, but truly an earthly father example. Yeah. It's, I, and even for men that are watching, again, I, we're really believing, and we were talking about this too, that men will hear this and maybe God will really prick their heart Absolutely. to do something more yeah. and really to pray about that. You know, not, we don't really, I, I was, I've always encouraged people this. It's like, don't be moved just on your emotions, you know, or what you yeah. see as emotional response. Yeah. Make sure you know God's in the middle of it and he's yep. encouraging you to do that. But you really said something that was really profound about something that God really showed you when you were a pastor. Mm. Yeah. I want you to share that really, really important. You know, you know, I think sometimes we make foster care maybe something it's not or harder than it is. Of course, bringing a child into your home, that's a big deal. 
But sometimes foster care isn't, you know, government attached, the child's been removed from the home. How many times have we gone to church and we've seen grandma bringing the grandkids because mom and dad maybe aren't coming to church or yeah. not willing to come, but grandma's bringing them. That's a type of spiritual fostering Absolutely. or grandma, grandpa, aunt and uncle. And, and these, as a pastor, I look back on years where, you know, I was just thinking they were heroes of the faith, but I'll be honest, I didn't do much about it as far as a yeah. church. But there's an opportunity there, even for regular traditional foster families, bringing these kids into church, yeah. wrap around in care, uh, love on them, show them, you know, God's love, but show them tangible uh, yeah. love as a church. And when when I looked at that, there's opportunities here for men to get into these kids' lives. Uh, everything that we talk about, the man doesn't deplete what, what we need the women in their lives, but yeah. the men, there's an opportunity here to step up. and. It may be taking kids into your home as foster parents, but it, it also could just be being available, being there, yeah. encouraging, uh, calling out the wins when you see it in, in kids' lives. Yeah, and I think it's important too, where you were, you were just saying that, it's like even the lady across the street that brings kids yeah. to church. I mean, she's yeah. operating in that capacity too. Yeah, absolutely. And I think you mentioned as well about the what foster care really is. It's yeah. not just fostering to adopt. Right. But it's fostering with an intent to provide yeah. godly Yeah. I would can call it like an injection of God literally into that person's yeah. life, that little person's life, the young yeah. person's life. But can you share the testimony as well that you shared uh, with I me can't, before you I, say I as can. Well? You know we we sometimes approach it as a rescuing mentality and yeah. and maybe there's an element of that, but if we can kind of tweak the mindset from from rescuing to redeeming. You know, we That's understand great. it at a spiritual level, but there's a physical uh, manifestation or an opportunity here uh, to redeem a family. So we stand in that gap as a foster family, yeah. and especially as a man, what a, what a great opportunity. Yeah. We, we know that Jesus stood in in that gap for us. And yeah. so we, we, we understand it at the spiritual level. There's also spiritual uh, or uh, uh, physical ramifications yeah. to that. Uh, one of the testimonies, you know, we did a family vacation with we have a residential program uh, of foster care along mm -hmm. with all our other ministries and and we took all these residential kids on a, on a trip and uh, we had a donor we're donor dependent and and we had a we had a one of the kids he just looked at me he was he was approaching aging out and he looked at me on one of the family vacations and he goes I've never been on a family vacation wow in his situation he had been adopted and given back so you just got trauma on top of trauma yeah. and he just looked at me and he goes man Thank you. He goes, I, I've never been on a family vacation. This is the best vacation I've ever had. Wow. The truth was, it was probably the only vacation he ever right. had. At that time, he was 17. And I just, I, I saw the tears in his eyes, the sincerity. And sometimes we just never think about that. Yeah. You know, uh, kids come from certain environments, you know, and, and we never think that maybe they didn't get experiences that other kids get. I, right. I remember one time, one kid, looked, uh, we, were, we were on a trip and, and they looked out the window and they go, cows. And I went, yeah, yeah. <laughs> they had never seen a cow. They'd never been out wow. of their environment, where they where they lived, out wow. of that uh, complexity. Yeah. And so, I, I think there's opportunities for us to stand in the gap, and particularly as we're talking about today, men yeah. have an opportunity to stand in the gap, to just be the pillar God's designed us to be. As we follow Him, as He places our steps. Those opportunities are there and our kids need it. Yeah, that's awesome. So share about uh, the different ways that people can connect with you and you know get involved in your organization Absolutely. if they feel like God's calling Absolutely. Well there's gonna be there's gonna be websites on the on the uh, screen that they can go to. Compact Family Services is one of those. We're expanding, we're an agency that's expanding across the nation. That's our goal. We've operated for almost 80 years in this ministry. 24-7 wow. reaching and redeeming the most vulnerable wow. in our nation. That's so That's amazing. amazing. And then we have the, uh, the Assemblies of God Foster Care Network that envelops not just Assemblies of God ministries, but like-minded, like-hearted ministries yeah. that are part of this. Yeah. And uh, coming together, we can do something about this, not just in foster care, but in family care, yeah. keeping those families intact, families reaching families. Yeah. There's a powerful opportunity here, and we need the men behind this. Yeah, and it, like you said, it wasn't just even foster care and the and the adoption. Yeah. There, I was looking at your booth and stuff here at General Counsel. There's so many different things that you guys do as yep. whole, like I want to use the word holistically in appropriate manner. Sure. But it's like, it really is in all different avenues and All facets. different avenues. You know, we, yeah. we take care of, uh, 
uh, unwed moms, you know, just a yep. single that are foster care that have found themselves in a situation, and we're loving on them, teaching them how to be a mom, helping families stay together. Yeah, you know, that That's maybe a, a situation that it's not abuse, yeah. but it's it's a neglect. They don't know how, they don't have the life skills. They don't know how to clean. They don't have to to feed a child, and we can come in and and show them and be that that bridge yeah. and stand in the gap and there's there's opportunities here not just for for men uh but for women for families, yeah, families. for christians yeah the, that's awesome. the harvest is plentiful yeah we sure. need the laborers it's, yeah that's yeah. uh be, to be biblical that, 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 that should probably be in the bible, <laughs> Maybe in the bible. Hey. Yeah. so can you pray for our men absolutely right now as well Alan? absolutely i'd be honored to yeah. yeah jesus we just thank you for the opportunity got the opportunity to follow you yeah. lord just that in itself is so amazing and god you've got a plan and maybe there's some viewers here that you're stirring in their heart something and they mm -hmm. they maybe don't know exactly what it is and god maybe we maybe they're even complicating it god the truth is we may not all be involved directly in foster care but god we can all do something god help us to know what that something is yeah lord we know there's nothing like the church when the church is being the church that's the vehicle that you've chosen lord god to reach this world help us be the church you've called us to be. God, bless these men. Anoint them, I pray. In your name, Jesus. Amen. Alan, thank hey. you for being on the program. Blessings. Thank you, my so friend. So great. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Before we talk with our friends Edwin and Carter about their experience with foster care and adoption, take a look at this quick trip that Yolanda and I took to Edgewood Orchards. As you drive through rural America, it gives you perspective on how much our farmers work hard and produce for the country. We're here at Edgewood Orchards in Quincy, Illinois, and I wanted to highlight how this wonderful family farm produces apples for America. The orchards were established in 1930. They have been owned by the same family, and now the third generation is currently operating the orchards. They have 3,000 trees, which grow approximately 12,000 bushels of apples each year. A bushel averages 100 apples, which means they produce 1.1 million apples, or about 440,000 pounds. Apples are hand-picked and then put into these bushel bins, which hold about 800 pounds of apples. They currently grow 12 varieties. Most of them are more popular ones, but there are a few that I had never heard of. Zestar, Jonna Gold, and Blushing Golden. Brayburn, Fuji, and Granny Smith are a late October harvest. Edgewood produces about 17,000 gallons of apple cider per year. The apple cider is made from fresh, whole apples, and there's literally nothing else added. The flavor comes from their secret blend of tart, sweet, and neutral apples. Tart apples, which are Jonathan, Blushing Golden, Zestar, Pink Lady, and Brayburn, and then the sweet variety of apple, which is Honeycrisp, Golden Delicious, John of Gold, and Fuji. Apples should be stored in plastic bags in your refrigerator because the plastic helps keep them from drying out. So Edwin, thanks for being on Man360. Thank you for having me. And I appreciate uh, just you and Ashley and what you guys have stepped into with adoption and foster care. We're in here in your new house. That's going to be seven bedrooms coming up here when you get the basement finished. Yes, correct. Seven <laughs> so bedrooms. Crazy. And uh, we just did lunch with you guys. Your kids are so well behaved. Um, Yolanda and I were just mentioning that on the way back. But I wanted you to share real quick about, you know, how did you and Ashley get into doing foster care and adoption? So, like I told you earlier, uh, I was a foster kid growing up, and um, we just we felt on our hearts that if we have the means, we might we need to help kids. Um, somebody took the chance on me, and yeah. uh, we wanted to do the same thing. Yeah, that's awesome. So, um, when in that process of foster care and adoption, you know, maybe it's kind of foreign to people, or maybe guys that are listening or hearing this, and they're like, I don't even know what the first step would be in that. Um, but as you've gotten into this, what is something that you feel like has been maybe a, a real challenge and what's something that's been a reward in being able to spend time with your kids? Uh, so honestly, I think the reward is, is my kids being able to share their love, um, with the other kids. Uh, mm. a, the, a lot of these kids have never seen the love that we show our own kids and, mm. and for them to come into our house and love them like we love our own kids. Uh, it, I think it really makes a difference in, in their lives uh, going down the road. Yeah. Um, probably one of the biggest struggles is is just the system in general. Yeah. Um, there's a lot a lot of legalities that that just happen over the time uh, of foster care, mm -hmm. and it, it could it's a struggle a lot. And yeah. 
obviously, you know, when you, when you have that bond with the kids and they end up leaving, um, mm-hmm. th- that right there is, is very tough to deal with. Yeah. And I know Ashley too, she'll text us or say, Hey, just can't give any specific details, but you need to be praying. And it's ob- it, it seems like it never happens during the middle of the day when something happens. Yeah. It's always like one to three in the morning or something right. where I was getting these texts from Ashley or yes. from you guys. So can you share about how you've rescued some kids out of the foster care and, and bringing them into foster care? Yep. So uh, Ashley and myself, what we did, we volunteered to as as emergency care parents. So which is like the craziest version, yes. essentially. So of the care. one and one through yeah. three o'clock in the morning, uh, parents get pulled over because wow. of a car accident and they're on you know some sort of drug, and then the kid needs somewhere to live, uh, you know, in that time of them trying to find family or the other parent involved. Yeah. So, so that right there, really opening our doors uh, at any time of the day uh, to be able to help somebody is, yeah. is what we, you know, is, is, is what we were doing. Yeah, and so you mentioned about you being a foster kid growing up. What are some things that you remember that were, that, that maybe you're giving now to your kids that maybe you didn't have when you were growing up or maybe something that you feel like, this was great and I wanna give those to my kids as well? Honestly, it's, it's love, it's care. Mm. Um, I don't think, Growing up, I, I didn't have like the, the greatest childhood. And so uh, just being loved on um, when I got there. And I was a high schooler when I got there. Really? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Wow. So, uh, I didn't realize that. I mean, yeah, that is yeah. incredible. So, so I was a high schooler. And just the love that that family showed um, as soon as I stepped in the door was, was life-changing. Yeah. And it's even seeing your kids at lunch and just being around you guys for a couple of days. I know that we've seen you guys in different phases or stages of your lives <laughs> <Yeah>. from <laughs> actually doing your wedding for you and Ashley yes. um, to having your three boys and then your other kids that have come along. And even when you lived in Wyoming, your giant house you had there, all your property being here. Um, but I just really think too, and just again, and seeing those kids interacting with one another, I feel like too, just watching the love and the care, like you said, that there's even something supernatural that you and Ashley have really encouraged in them to be able to love those kids. You know, I really, it's been amazing to see I, that. I, I love it. I love the fact that, that our kids can show these other kids love. Um, I mean, it's something that me and my wife do with our kids and we, we try to treat every kid that comes to our house as if they were our kid. Yeah. I think that's, that's a, a really important thing. Mm-hmm. You know, you don't want to, you don't want to single them out and, and act like they're, they're different. They're, they're yeah. not different. They need the love of a mom and a dad. Yeah. And, and that's what we show them. Yeah. And I know that the, the one child that you still have in foster care, yes. I know that Ashley was mentioning that when he goes away and comes back, that it's almost kind of like a, has to almost be like a reset because they get around that other environment and then they come back in. But it's even the love of Christ really that I feel like you and Ashley have and surrounding um, him with being able to see what God can do in his life. I think that's really important too. Yeah, it, it is. Yeah. Um, and, and like I was saying earlier about the system, uh, the system is, is the broken part. And, yeah. and that's part of the system is, is when he goes to do these visits. Mm-hmm. But, yeah. But yeah. Well, and I know too, for you guys, it's like to have a good godly couple that loves Christ. You were just in church with you guys today. Yes. You know, all the kids are in church. It's not like, oh, well, we don't know what this kid's spiritual, whatever is, even when they come into the house. But really giving them as much as you can in that foundation of Christ is important too. It's yes. Like, yeah. uh, I think showing, like showing them that, that Christ is first in our family is going to be very important. No matter how long they're in our house, if yeah. we can show them that uh, down the road, they're going to know that Christ is going to be there for them as yeah, well. Yeah, that's awesome. Edwin, thank you so much for being on the program. Thank you, sir. Appreciate you. I appreciate it. And also your service. Oh, thank you. All the you. branches of service that you've uh, done for the military. I just appreciate that as well. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Carter, thanks for being on Man360. Yeah, thank you for having me. Yeah, I just wanted to spend a real quick time with you, just kind of talking about you as the oldest son and brother to seven kids. Yeah. Uh, I mean, you went from like three in your family of kids, your two younger brothers. Um, what do you feel like you've been able to give maybe some of these foster kids that have come into the home? Just giving them love and being caring, you know, showing them how to play different sports and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's been good. So have you, what do you feel like has been the greatest role for you in giving and showing them love? Like what have been some practical ways do you feel like you've done that? Definitely just like, I like showing kids like baseball, like how to play baseball and Mm -hmm. like just teaching them all the different rules of the sport and Mm -hmm. 
showing them love. Yeah. So have you been able to pray with them at times and be able to encourage them and do some of that stuff too? Yeah. So we have like kids' Bibles all around the house, just like reading them some of that and just teaching them like who he is and stuff like that. That's good. Well, and also one of your small, one of the younger kids that are in the home, like he's really taken a liking to you as well. I know your mom said that he just, he just loves you Mm -hmm. and just loves being around you. And like, has that been a a fun experience too with him? Yeah, definitely. Like having a little brother, little (laughs) rascal running around. (laughs) That's awesome. Yeah. That's awesome. So I just really appreciate you, um, you know, and again from Yolanda and I just watching you guys interact as a family that you really have really stepped into that role. And I know that even that your mom's always shared that you've already always, always been a kind person anyways, you know, just in your, in who I really believe that's Jesus in you, um, but that you're able to give these kids something different that they've never had before. And that love is pretty awesome. So yeah. it's good stuff. Yeah. Thank you for being on Man360. Thank you for having me. Appreciate it. Yeah. So today is a little different book review because it's this book is a compilation of seven books from a single author. And it's by Watchman Nee and it's compiled by a guy named Sentinel Culp who got the approval of Watchman Nee's people to be able to uh, compile all these books together into one work. So this is one of my favorite books to use as part of my devotions. And for a few years, I would call my dad and we would read the sections of this book to each other and discuss. And I've also started an Instagram page where I post quotes from the book to encourage you each week. You can go to Watchman Nee Quotes and uh, give it a follow. So I wanted to give you some background information about Watchman Nee. Very interesting guy. Uh, He was born in China in November uh, 4th of 1903. He accepted Jesus Christ into his heart at the age of 17. In 1926, he fell ill with tuberculosis and was expected to die. So he didn't want to leave this world without putting on paper the wonderful truths that God had taught him from the world. So it said he's worked zealously in spite of his weakness and high fever to write a three volume work, which was entitled The Spiritual Man that he finished in 1928. So several months later, amazingly, he was, the doctors had given up hope on him and he survived and he was healed by God. So having been blessed, he had a photographic memory basically so he could, anything he saw, he remembered. Watchman, he felt it was the Lord's call upon him to be a watchman for brothers and sisters of the faith in China. And one of the things I appreciate about Watchman is that throughout his ministry, he emphasized that the redemption was just the beginning of their Christian walk. You know, redemption is like when people ask, when you ask Christ into your heart, a lot of authors or people will just kind of talk around that experience of giving your life to Christ. And that is absolutely the most important piece, right? So you have to be, you have to change direction and say, God, I need you to be in control of my life. But what Watchman Nee really believed was that that was just the start of your Christian walk, not the end of it. So a lot of people say, yeah, I I asked Christ into my heart, I'm going to heaven and that's good enough and and whatever. But Watchman was really like, no, you need to work on and perfect, essentially perfecting your faith with Christ. So Watchman, he continued faithfully in his service to to the Lord. He was imprisoned uh, in communist China in 1952. And then he died after 20 years being in prison in 1972. And um, so, and he continued just to expand everything that he was thinking about, like who he was, um, just was so great because God used him in such a great way. So this book is broken up into topical sections for reference. um, So it makes it easier to find things. So it includes 63 topical chapters. So there's love, not the world. This is just some of the examples of them. From faith to faith, the prayer ministry of the church, spiritually ready or spiritual reality or obsession, and the communion of the Holy Spirit. So I think this book would also make a great small group discussion starter. Um, I think it would enhance messages if you're a pastor or you're a teacher of the Bible or you lead a small group, I think it would be great for that. So here are some passages from the book so you can get a feel about what the book is about. So um, again, this is just one of the passages and I'll have to put this up on the screen. Strong-willed people are convinced that their feelings or ways and judgments are always right. But Paul said in Philippians, do not trust your flesh, And he has parenthetically, see Philippians 3, 3. We must be led by God to such a place that we dare not trust our own judgment. The beginning of the destruction of the outward man is when you no longer dare to trust yourself. I mean, it's just so deep. I mean, there's so much there you can unpack. And again, it's really very much thought provoking. Here's another one. People who are greatly used by God are people who not only are under his control, but also have self-control. If we do not have control over our earthly bodies, we will certainly fall 
when a special demand come, comes upon us. That's the reason why we have faith. That's the reason why we have our relationship with God is being able to control and self-control those emotions. And I think Watchman really uh, brings it out perfectly. Here's the last one. And it says, a know-it-all, a know-it-all is a person who loves to control people. He delights in being opinionated and takes pleasure in giving orders. He knows what to do in each situation and circumstance and cannot tolerate differences. He tends to take things into his own hands and set himself up as the leader. He makes decisions for others and is always meddling in the affairs of other men and even in the smallest matters because he likes to control everything. This is what he says. He is the busiest person in the world because he feels compelled to look after everything. In all matters, whether large or small, he has his own idea his own opinion in his own way, hence he is not able to walk the straight path of God. So it's not all just specifically Bible verses. It's more just talking about, again, principles of, again, this is talking about a controlling person, but he'll always reference scripture um, in, in back. And I put this in my notes. If we are busy telling others what to do, we don't have time to listen to God. It is not physically or spiritually possible to listen and to speak at the same time. So I just to wrap this up real quick, Book, books like this are a great companion to your Bible since they address so many topics that Christians deal with. You can see from Watchman's writings that, um, that he does so many great things in a way that will be able to help show us exactly who God is in our lives. And also you can understand that he was a man who spent countless hours with God and was dedicated to the Bible. This book is highly recommended if you have just recently gotten saved since it's a topical format that's very easy to read. And you can go to man360.tv forward slash additional content to see a link to find this book. Let's do our 360 degree review of today's program. I loved what Alan Bixler said when he mentioned that foster care is not just a state institution of placing kids and families. It's really the responsibility of the local church to see kids and youth that need a place to belong like the church and bring them in. The topic of adoption and foster care is something that can be an incredible blessing to a child. And if it's something that's on your heart and needs to be prayed about in the family and you as men need to take that lead. If you feel like God is prompting you to either adopt or to be a foster parent, please go to man360.tv forward slash additional content and contact Alan and his ministry. I hope you enjoyed hearing foster care and adoption from a man's perspective with Edwin and his son Carter. It's incredible to think that Edwin came from the foster care system and then realized the importance of giving that love to kids is awesome. And Carter being a big brother to not just his other blood brothers, but his adopted brothers and sisters as well is commendable. When you're around Carter, you just sense a kindness that's unusual for a youth his age. You know that his parents, Ashley and Edwin, are doing things right in his life and the lives of all their kids. Thanks to Edwin and Carter for being on the program. Our trip to Edgewood Orchards was fun and that cider was delicious. For a link to the orchard, go right now to man360.tv forward slash additional content and click on the provided link. And I hope you enjoyed my book review of Secrets to Spiritual Power by Watchman Nee. My prayer is that you'll be inspired to absorb and learn the Word of God in a way that not only helps you get by each day, but helps you become an overcomer in all areas of your life. Watchman Nee is an incredible author, and this book is a wonderful amalgamation of many of his best works. Man360 exists for men to be complete in every way through Christ, mentally, physically, and spiritually. Please connect with us on our website, Facebook, or Instagram, and we'll see you next week right here on Man360.